in order to strengthen the supraspinatus, we need to uh, challenge the muscle by asking it to contract. And we need to do this in a way that doesn't encourage impingement or pinching of the uh, muscle or muscle tendon junction underneath the acromion or the coracoacromial um, ligament. So uh, the way to think about that is to think about a, a can. <laughs> we do exercises, we can do exercises that are either a um, full can or an empty can. We're dumping material out of a can. So uh, these uh, empty can type exercises are ones that tend to bring the, um, the greater tubercle anteriorly and uh, tend to chafe the supraspinatus tendon uh, underneath the coracoacromial ligament. So we need to do full can exercises in order to, uh, to have adequate space uh, and avoid impingement. Initial strengthening of the supraspinatus is done with very light weights. This is a uh, three pound uh, dumbbell and I put these at my side and I bring them up just to shoulder uh, level. If I go higher and if I have impingement, then I'm going to be uh, chafing the supraspinatus tendon. Notice how I don't bring them up with my thumbs pointing forward or down. That's going to increase impingement possibilities as well. I bring them up with my thumbs uh, going up toward the ceiling. This is called the uh, full can position. So uh, it's important to go through uh, range to about 90 degrees or so, shy of impingement, and bring the weights down again. So the weights are facing thumbs pointing um, away from me, and as I raise, then I turn them so my thumbs are pointed upward. So it's controlled movement. If you want to time it out, you can go up for three, one, two, three, and down for five, one, two, three, four, five, and up, one, two, three, and down for one, two, three, four, five. The initial exercise is going to be um, challenging, but not enough to injure the muscle. That's why we start light. And I should be able to do eight to 12, um, sorry, eight to 12 repetitions of this uh, without causing myself any pain or grief. If I do, then the weight's too much, or I have my position off, and then pinching the supraspinatus. Um, after somebody can do um, these exercises for uh, three sets eventually, so they can go up and down for 12 repetitions, three times for three sets of 12 repetitions, uh, then it's time to increase the weight. These are uh, five pound dumbbells, so it's a more challenging weight. So if I pr proceeded from three pounds, then when I start with five, I'll probably be back down to only being able to do seven or eight of these and coming down. I gradually work up over the course of two or three weeks. I work my way up so I can easily do 12 repetitions for two or three sets with five pounds. Then I go for eight pounds. And once I can do that, then it's probably time to start working um, eccentrically. So people commonly find that after they've been able to do um, 8 pounds uh, 12 times for 3 sets, and a lot of the soreness is um, backing off in their supraspinatus. Uh, so the muscle uh, and its tendon are getting healthier, but in order to really reverse tendinosis, we have to eccentrically overload the tendon, meaning that we contract the muscle and then we let our arms fall, and we use the muscle contraction at the end to decelerate that movement. So I bring my arms up nice and slowly, and I let them fall, and then I stop that by using my shoulder muscles. times for two or three sets very easily, then I increase the weight again. When I get up to eight pounds or so um, of decelerating eccentric overload exercises for two or three sets, then the shoulders rehabilitate it for a lot of people. At that point, then the tendon shouldn't feel swollen. The texture of the tendon actually changes so it feels smoother and it's uh, not painful. And if the person is, uh, is uh, you know, a strong athlete, then they're gonna, that's just the beginning. They're gonna have to train um, their supraspinatus 
even more strongly.